Hello, it's Pastor Morris Thompson again. I want us to take a look in God's Word. Let's, take, let's turn to Luke chapter 15. Uh, and in this story we see, in this chapter, we see a story about a lost son. You see, brothers and sisters, Jesus was with the sinners and, and tax collectors. And as he was gathering around them, talking with them and mingling with them, he, he began to hear some muttering, some words. These were Pharisees and they were, they were saying, how could this man, how could this man, Jesus, hang out with sinners and Pharisees, excuse me, sinners and tax collectors? The Pharisees were looking around and, and they were wondering this and Jesus hearing this, he began to tell them several stories. And one story in particular I want us to look at is a story of the lost son. You may know it as the story of the prodigal son. And in this story we see that uh, there was a man, he had two sons, and uh, one was older, the other was younger, and the younger son said, Father, I, I want my inheritance. In that time, in that culture, if he had said that to his father who was still alive, he was basically saying, I wish you were dead because I want my inheritance now. And so the father, he gave his son his inheritance, and the son went away to a faraway land. And the story goes that the son squandered his entire inheritance. And when the country fell bankrupt, the son, he began to get worried, scared. He had no more money. And so this son, a Jew, took a job feeding pigs. You know, it's interesting. He was at his lowest point. A Jew would not go anywhere near pigs. Pigs were filthy animals. They were unclean. But this son was so broke. This son was so poor in this faraway land that all he could do was feed pigs. And the story goes that he was so hungry that he desired to eat the food that the pigs ate. At some point, he realized that he was a hit rock bottom and he thought to himself, I'll just run home to my father's house and I, maybe he'll at least make me one of his, uh, his servants. Even my father's servants eat better than these pigs. And so he goes back to his house. But I want to focus on one aspect of the story that we oftentimes look over. It says, it's in verse 20. It says, so he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. You know, oftentimes we hear that and we think, okay, well, that's a great, that's a great portion to the story. The father saw the son and he ran after his son. He embraced him and he kissed him and he took him back in the house. But let's look at it from the eyes of the Pharisees, of the tax collectors, of the sinners who are listening to the story. You see, brothers and sisters, one thing that Jewish men never did was run. Jewish men did not run. It was shameful. It was shameful for a Jewish man to run. They would have to pick up their tunics and they'd have to show their legs. And that was a sign of shame. And so this father saw his son a long way off and he began to run to his son, lifting up his tunic, exposing his legs to community, exposing his shame and embracing his son. So you may ask, well, why didn't the father wait for the son to get to the community? Why didn't the father just wait for the son to get there? Well, you see, during that time, there was a ceremony called Kezaza. And what Kazaza, what would happen is if a, if a Jew, if a young Jewish male went off to a, to a foreign land and he squandered his inheritance among Gentiles and he came back to the town, they would perform this ritual ceremony where they would take a pot before when he reaches the entrance of the town, they take a large pot and they would smash it in front of him. And as they smash it, they perform Kazaza and say, you are now cut off from your people. And so in this story, this young, this young man, after his inheritance is squandered, after he had, he had spent it on prostitutes and on parties and a, a lifestyle that was not in tune with the, with the God he served. After he came back from all of that, having nothing, he was coming back to the community. And you can imagine that the community was gathering together in the front of the town to perform kezaza, to tell him that he's cut off from his people. His father seeing him from a far way off, decided to show his shame, pick up his tunic and show
and run after the sun before the sun could reach the city gates, before the sun could be considered cut off from the people. His father ran after him, exposing his shame so his son wouldn't take on shame. And he embraced that son. Word of God says that the, he had compassion on his son. And if you read it in the original language, it's a compassion, it's a moving, it's an action word. It actually means that he was moved with compassion and he embraced his son. And it continues, but the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. So the father ran after his son, exposing his shame, so the son wouldn't have to endure the shame of the community. And he embraced the son, and then he called his servants to come and put sandals on his feet and a robe over him and a ring, restoring his, his him son right back to his rightful place in the house. You know, when we go off and we squander our spiritual inheritance, when we sin, God comes running after us and he embraces us. He embraces us. God comes running after us and he exposes his shame so that we won't endure the shame of our sin. How did God show his shame for us? When Jesus died on the cross, he became sin so that we could be cleansed. You know, oftentimes when when um, artists paint uh, the image of Jesus, they usually put um, a loincloth around his private area. And that's just to cover up his shame. That's just so uh, we give some respect to our Savior. But if we're really accurate to the Bible, if we're really accurate to the text, we would take that loincloth off. You see, the Romans during that time, they crucified people naked. And so Jesus wasn't hanging on the cross with anything covering his private area. He was completely naked, enduring sh the shame of sin so that we could be honored in front of God. Christ endured the cross. Christ took on our shame so that we could be saved. Christ hung on the cross, not just his legs being shown, but his entire body shown, the God of heaven and earth, naked on a piece of wood, dying for you and for me. And as you may be listening to this word and thinking about the sins which you've done, thinking about the shame which you've taken on, God is telling you today, I've died on the cross for you. I took your shame. No one has to perform kazaza. You don't have to bear guilt, hurt, and pain anymore. I took it all, I endured it all, so that you could be saved. You're my child. That's God's word, that's his message for you today. And I pray as you come back to the Father, that you allow him to restore you to your rightful place. God bless you.